Hello and welcome to the Sustranti Financial Training video. This is a bite-sized video dedicated for you students who are studying for your BA4 exams. In today's video, we are looking at the topic of money laundering. Now, well, I'm not talking about putting the money in the washing machine and giving it a good clean. In fact, money laundering is making dirty money seem clean. So that means exchanging money or assets that are obtained criminally for money or other assets that are legitimate. And this happens, they're laundered to such an extent that the clean money doesn't have any links to the criminal activity which generated the initial wealth in the first place. And money laundering also includes money that is used to fund terrorism. So let's have a look at the process of money laundering. So first of all, the criminal makes the profits or gets the money. Then the first stage is the red, red square, and that's placement. So that's placing the money, the proceeds of the crime, into a legitimate business or activity. So for example, they might put it into a shop. Then we move down, we follow the arrows down to the yellow box, and that's called layering. So this is when the money is transferred from place to place to conceal its criminal origins. So they might move from shop to another business to another business to another business, or from bank account to bank account to bank account. So it's getting further away from the criminal activity. And then finally, we move on to the green square, which is integration. So this is when the money goes back to the criminals and now the money of course looks like it's from a legitimate source maybe from the sale of assets or property so there we go that's a very brief look at the money laundering process now we are dealing with law here so of course each jurisdiction is likely to have their own laws in relation to money laundering now, the UK's is regulated by the Proceeds of Crime Act of 2002. This act now forms part of a four-part Criminal Finances Act, which was brought in in 2017. And this act, amongst other things, has also introduced a corporate offence of failure to prevent the facilitation of tax evasion. And so we're going to have a look at that as a way to show the various crimes relating to money laundering. But once again, remember, you don't have to remember the specific sections relating to UK legislation for your exam. OK, it's just to use as an example. Now, what the Proceeds of Crime Act in 2002 did was to create a single set of money laundering offences. And of course, that's applied throughout the jurisdiction. And the Acts created three criminal offences. They are laundering, failures report and tipping off. So let's have a look at laundering first of all. Now laundering, it's illegal or it's an offence now to conceal, to disguise, to convert, to transfer or remove criminal property from England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. And if someone is found to have done so, they could be liable for 14 years in imprisonment. The second offence created by POCA is the failure to report. And this means it's an offence if someone doesn't disclose knowledge or any suspicions they have regarding money laundering. But this isn't just anyone. It's not an offence if your next door neighbour has suspicions about you, don't worry, they can't, they're, they're not going to report you. This only applies to individuals in a relevant business, such as accountancy. And in the UK, the offence should be disclosed to a nominated money laundering reporting officer within their organisation or to the National Crime Agency. And the third offence that's created by poker is tipping off. And this is an offence to disclose information to a party which could influence the investigation. So, for example, pre-warning the offender about a report that's been made to the National Crime Agency. So there we go. There's poker for you. But it's not just poker we're going to look at. We're also looking at the money laundering regulations of 2007. And these regulations really apply to various different business sectors. So financial and credit businesses, accountants and estate agents. 
and the obligations require professionals involved in these industries to report money laundering to the authorities and to make sure there are systems in place so that staff are trained to recognize signs of money laundering as well as to keep records. So here we go, the money laundering regulations of 2007. We know that professionals should report money laundering to authorities, that systems should be in place to train staff and records kept. Uh, the CCAB, which stands for the Consultative Committee of Accountancy Bodies, has also issued guidance on money laundering procedures, stating that the businesses must establish adequate and appropriate policies and procedures relating to risk assessment and management in order to prevent operations related to money laundering on terrorist financing. And also the money laundering has put two different bodies in charge of regulating the sectors I named at the beginning, which is financial and credit businesses, accountants and estate agents. And it falls on the Financial Services Authority to supervise all the financial firms, while the Office of Fair Trading supervises the consumer credit firms and the estate agents. So there we go, that's everything that you're going to need to learn for your BA4 exam when it comes to the tricky subject of money laundering. And if you want any more of these bite-sized videos, be sure to like this one or subscribe to our channel and we'll keep them coming to try and help your revision go as smoothly and as easy as possible to make sure that you get the grades that you deserve. Thank you very much for watching today and good luck with your revision.